it's definitely going live and it says you are live now maybe youtube uh, link that we have forwarded yeah it's there it's live definitely sir Yes. Can start. Yep. So <laughs> once again, we will have a round of introduction. Uh, sure. In a few seconds, uh, I'll start a round of introduction. Quickly, we'll wrap up the introduction, and then we'll start with the matter. Yep. Yeah. I request uh, Mr. Ajay Singh, sir, to check. youtube and the facebook links uh, i think youtube is and we will will start with the match youtube has started sir please go ahead sir in youtube yeah youtube has started and facebook will start in 10 seconds it's countdown will start in 10 seconds youtube and the links will start in 10 seconds youtube will do one thing yeah youtube has started sir please go ahead youtube and the facebook will start in 10 yeah. seconds right and uh, yeah this yeah. will start it yeah you do uh joker sir please i think there is a lot please, of uh, yeah please mute mute your uh, youtube streaming uh, preview YouTube streaming preview. Okay, I'll mute it. Mute it. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, please go ahead. Start the uh, like uh, presentation uh, or uh, your introduction of the guest and uh, session. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yes, definitely. Uh, so I will start with the introduction. A quick introduction to the uh, resource persons once again. Uh, so I am very happy and. Uh, this is a privilege for our college nb nowle singhagad college of engineering solapur uh, the department of electronics and telecommunication so on behalf of uh, nb nowle singhagad college of engineering solapur and our principal dr shankar nowle sir i welcome all the resource persons uh, mr naresh jasotani mr uh, ishmit bindra mr uh, vinod and mr deepa chauhan so we have our four resource persons who are joining us from michigan usa and it's a great privilege to have them uh, so basically naresh mr naresh deshwatani uh, the resource person who has joined us today is working with google at michigan usa and he is a subject matter expert in ai ml and data analytics and he is also uh, his designation is specialist uh, customer engineering at google uh, mr ishmit bindra is also an expert in data analytics and ai and he comes from the company miracle software systems at michigan usa and uh, mr vinod and uh, mr uh, deep raj can you please introduce because uh, i don't know because uh, it's like uh, you can give a quick short introduction sure so my name is vinod silnani and uh, i am also a data expert i have been in the data space for over 13 years now and uh, it's an honor to be on this webinar thank you thank you mr vinod thank you good morning and good evening everyone i am deepraj chauhan i also have almost 15 years of experience in data 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 analytics ai and i'm really excited for this webinar today good luck everyone thank you mr deepraj uh, i would uh, like to have a quick introduction from mr ishmit and mr naresh in a short span of time So that we can start. Sure, Naresh, do you want to go first? Sure, let me do that. <clears throat> so, hello everybody. I am Naresh Jaswatani, and uh, as Vinay said, I am a specialist customer engineer at Google. So I deal with AI, machine learning, and data analytics, and I'm based out of US. I have over 16 years of experience in this space, and uh, this group, who is on the call. Uh, we have written a book as well which uh, we are going to discuss and again thank you mr sachin mr vinay and everybody of the staff 
of NB Navalis in the College of Engineering for having us and helping our students, helping newcomers in AI and machine learning. And I'm open to help in any form or fashion I can. Ishmeet. Thank you, Naresh. Hi, my name is uh, Ishmeet Bidra. Um, I come with about 12 years of experience with uh, data analytics and AI space. Uh, currently working with Miracle Software as a practice manager and a data architect. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here to share our knowledge. As Naresh mentioned, uh, we are doing these webinars more often to ensure that we are able to communicate our experience and knowledge to everybody across the globe. And uh, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, everybody at NB Naple College for giving us this opportunity to share our experience with everyone on board. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, with a short introduction now, I would request, I will introduce our principal, sir, Dr. Shankar Nowle, in a short span of time once again. So, our principal, Dr. Shankar Nowle, sir, has completed his MTech and PhD from BJTI Mumbai and from Italy. Uh, and he has also done his postdoctoral fellowship from Grenoble University, France, with a scholarship, Erasmus Mundus, from the European Commission, actually. He was one of the top five people who were selected in that university for the postdoctoral fellowship. <coughs> and he is actually a believer in learning and he has implemented many project based learning activities in all the colleges that he has worked till now. He is a passionate researcher in the field of UHF RFID passive tags and its applications. Thank you so much. I welcome all our uh, head of departments, our head of department, Mr. Siddharth Shirgan, sir, who is the head of electronics department, and all the head of departments from mechanical engineering, from computer science and engineering, from electrical engineering, and from civil engineering. And also our Training and Placement Officer, Mr. Vikas Marathi, sir, who has joined us. He is a Training and Placement Officer. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can proceed. Yes, we can, we can start now. Okay. So, uh, Ishmeet, over to you for agenda. Thank you, Naresh. So uh, today, the agenda of this uh, webinar is we would be discussing what is machine learning, to get started with machine learning. Um, what is the difference between uh, machine learning and data science? Because you know this is one of those things where people think uh, you know data science and machine learning are the same things. Well, actually, they are not. So we'll be discussing in more detail around it. Um, then what are pandas? You know, that is one of those uh, you know, B words out there. So how to get started with that? We'll give an overview of that. Uh, next, we have how to explore pandas using Google Colab. So I think uh, Google Colab has already made a lot of noise in the market, but uh, this is just to ensure that everybody is familiar with this. So we'll be giving an introduction on this and moving on next narration. And then we have a small demo lined up. So to ensure that uh, we are not just talking about things, we are able to give a dry run of how exactly and how easy it is to implement machine learning. Next. Now, what is machine learning, right? A simple definition, if I have to talk, is it's a type of AI, which is artificial intelligence, which provides an ability to learn without explicitly programming by feeding them the data. Right? This is a typical language, but I'll make it easier for you. Let's talk in terms of a kid. You know, um, As we grow, our parents guide us with a lot of different things, right? Um, you know, that you shouldn't do this whenever you're crossing the road, look left and right, then cross the road, right? That is the information and that is the data which is fed into us because of which we keep on learning that and we train ourselves that whenever we are crossing the road, we need to look left and right. Similarly, um, like not to put the hand inside a socket, right? What will happen? Of course, you'll get electrocuted, right? These are the things that your parents guide you in order to ensure that you are not doing the things in a wrong way. So similarly, a machine learning program is nothing, but you are feeding in a data and 
the machine learning program learns from that data what to be expected. It finds a pattern in that. And based on that, a model is generated. To give you a very simple example out there, let's say if I tell you, um, if I'm selling uh, four products, I'm making a profit of $1. I am selling 16 products. I'm making a profit of $4. If I'm selling 20 products, I'm making a profit of $5. And if I'm selling 100 products, I'm making a profit of 25. So what this would simply um, hit my mind there is that, you know what? The profit is equal to whatever the price of the product must be multiplied by a quarter of that, which is 0.25. But in the real world, machine learning is not that simple. Okay? So... Once that equation has already been created, what we call model in our world, this model would uh, help you in judging um, if I feed them with the new data. Like, let's say if I tell you now, if I'm able to sell um, 10 products, what would be my profit? It would be $2.50 because of this model. If I'm able to do 12 products, although it's not in the data that you see it in front of this, but since the model has already determined what my profit is about to be, it'll tell me, you know what? I think your profit is about to be $3. Now, this is, again, dependent on the data that you have fed into it, and the algorithm is able to predict based on that. Naresh, if we can move on to the next. So let's do a little bit of more deep dive into machine learning. Now, in the old time, what we knew you to do was because machine learning is typically confused with programming. Machine learning is not really only programming. Earlier, what we used to do was um, I know what the output is expected. I have the input. So I would write a code to ensure that I'm able to get that output. That is what we used to call the operation. Naresh, if we can move to the next one there. But in machine learning, it is the other way around. I have my input, I have my output. Now what I need to do in between this is, the I need to feed that data and because of which a model gets generated. So from a typical or a primitive method of how we used to do our programming, it has changed where I would have to write the operation rather than that, now, I know the input and the expected output. I would feed that, and based on that, a model would be generated. And that model is being deployed or used to predict other values or the unseen data. Now, typical example of machine learning is you know, speech and voice. So you must have used Google Translator. So what it's doing is, based on our... Uh, whatever language that we are feeding it, it is actually converting it into a recognition feature. Similarly, emails. A typical example of what we have seen, Google is automatically able to identify uh, which emails are spam and which are not. Uh, going into the historical sales data, we have the sales forecasting and everything uh, going on. Oh, sorry. So, historical sales data, when we are feeding into it, uh, we are able to forecast our sales. This is a typical example of your predictive analytics. We are trying to predict what my sales would be going forward. Talking from an advertisement's perspective, you know, where we are trying to track the click streams, you know, how many clicks were made on the ad. Today you see an ad on Instagram, right? Uh, if you click on it, Instagram is actually recording it. And that feed goes through that website that this is a feed that is coming from Instagram where somebody clicked on it. Or similarly, if somebody clicks on Facebook, the other, uh, <coughs> sorry, the advertising company actually gets that information. That is also an example of your machine learning. And we are able to do uh, online ads uh, prediction based on that, that, where we need to market, what is our best market where we need to put it. Uh, computer vision, which is example, a good example there would be Tesla. Tesla is able to use those sensors, the data, from, the data they are getting from different sensors across the car to predict whether the car is going in the right direction or not, uh, if there's a red light, when to stop, um, if there's a right which is required, if there's a deep point it's about to hit, if it needs to take a right, how safe it is to take a right. So all of those things, and it's training itself. 
self training itself by getting that information in order to give a seamless behavior to our customers bottle manufacturing companies uh, this is one of the good example in manufacturing where you are able to detect the defects which are coming in by taking the pictures of these products to ensuring that everything is going as expected moving on to the next one uh, let's give a very simple example um to identify what is the difference between machine learning and data science but typically everybody believes machine learning and data science are the same thing no they are not machine learning is a subset of data science or would i say um machine learning fuels acts as a fuel for data science to determine what is the output or what would the result from a business perspective would look like to give you an example let's talk about um you know we have a data in front of us saying that um we have area of a property you know how big is the property and how many bedrooms it has whether it's furnished or not what would be the price of the property this is a data set that we have in this what we are trying to do is we are trying to predict the price depending on these three input value what we call features in our area in our world what features are features are nothing these are the dependent input values based on which i would determine my target value which is in this case price now the model what it would do is once i feed these values a model would be generated based on if i input a area square footage how many number of bedrooms whether it's furnished or not i'll be able to predict what would be the new price of the house let's say if at this point of time um i feed in if i have a 1500 square feet apartment okay with uh three bedrooms and it's not furnished what would be a price of that that can be determined using this data that i provide although this value doesn't exist so going back to this the data science comes into picture is based on all of this information it would do smart insights on now what the smart insight on that is if you would see uh, the row number 3 and 4 both of these apartments are 1100 square feet with three bedrooms but one is furnished and one is not furnished and the price difference is roughly about 20% from 350k to 410k now the difference between them is coming out not because of the area not because of the number of bedrooms but actually because of the furnished apartment whether it's furnished or not so this is a smart insight that data science team would find it saying that uh, the hypothesis they would figure out is if it's a furnished home with exactly the same square footage and bedroom then probably the premium that we can get is 20% or more similarly if i have a 600 square feet apartment with one bedroom and if it's furnished then i'm expecting the price you know it's very simple now it can go up to 250k so this is what we call a predicted value which has been predicted by the model based on the data that we have so narish if you can move on to the next please what we have done as we have actually uh, written a book um adopting tensor flow for real world ai again tensor flow sounds like a very big thing but trust me if you would read this book this is for uh, starters uh, for what we call lazy engineers <laughs> so this is to ensure that everybody can easily understand that uh, we have tried to communicate our knowledge uh, very simply um, in this book and um, it is available on google books and uh, kindle and soon it will be available on the paperback copy also so if required you can definitely reach out to us or with any of the questions um narish over to you hey thank you sneet i think uh, it was wonderfully done and at least i understood it and uh, thank you sneet uh, so yeah this book is available on amazon.com and amazon.in i'm not selling you anything this book we are giving as a memento to mr sachin and mr vinay very soon so the book is in print and you will have it mr vinay and 
you know, feel free to distribute it. Absolutely, we are not trying to sell anything here. So that is the point which I wanted to make and uh, <clears throat> thank you again. So moving on, right? As Ishmit was mentioning that based on the earlier data set and their targets, so data which is historical with the targets as well as their inputs, the machine learning model is created. And that model can predict outputs for data which we don't know. And you don't have to code. And that was the concept which Ishmeet shared. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at uh, different types of machine learning use cases. So the first one is weather forecasting. Machine learning is being used today in weather forecasting, telling you what would be the weather next, like tomorrow. Click through rate. If you have an advertisement on YouTube or Facebook or Google, what would be the probability that number of people would be clicking onto that ad? And then sales forecasting. This is used forever, like where the sales would be, how much would be the sales, uh, how do you plan the sales in typical businesses? And then price prediction. If a new product is launched, what should be the price on which people would be ready to buy a product? So think of a Tesla car versus a BMW car versus a Honda car. So what would be the range depending upon the brand, the type, if it's electric or diesel or gas or petrol, you know, depending upon all those parameters, you can do a price prediction. One thing which you should be able to see here is all of these have a target. In weather, you have the temperature and the target. Click through rate is the number of people clicking on the target. Sales forecasting is the number of the sale on a product. And then you have a price prediction, which means what would be the price or what should be the price for a car. Because all the predictions which you are trying to make here is a number. This is known as regression. That means you have a continuous. Continuous meaning a number, a numeric. So continuous variable for prediction, continuous predicting a continuous variable that is called as regression. But think from a different perspective. In our college, now if you go and talk to Mr. Sachin or Mr. Vinay, most likely you will understand that they, if they talk to a student, they will know that what kind of student he is. Is he really brilliant, intelligent, top performer? Or he is a mediocre student? Or he is a student who would need a little bit more help than others? Please understand that I'm not going to be using the word poor performer. I'm going to use the word a person who would need more help than others. So customer churn retention. This is a very common use case in places where you want to understand how many customers would be able to retain? Diagnostic. Coronavirus, right? This is the thing of today. So how they are predicting is, if you have certain parameters in your blood cell or nasal strips, you have corona versus no corona. It's a classification. You are classifying a set of people. Next is image classification. You must have seen the facial recognition application on your cell phone must have seen the various AI capabilities you are dealing with every single day. That is and related to vision, albums, photographs. These are in its categories. And then, because it's not a number you are predicting here, you are predicting a class. You are predicting a category. This is known as classifications. So I have two types of machine learning categories, regression and classification. Are these the only types? Because both of them have a target which you're predicting, like a weather forecasting, click through rate, sales forecasting, price prediction, you have a target. Even in the class, you have a class as a target. And therefore, these algorithms 
are known as supervised learning. That means you have an input, you have output data already from historical data set, and you are trying to predict new unseen data's output using the model. The model itself is a mathematical algorithm. It's a mathematical calculation. Details of which we will do probably in the next webinar or a session. Now, supervised learning is one leg. There are multiple legs of super supervised learning. There are many categories of machine learning. Supervised learning happens to be one of them and most popular. So what is the other type of learning? Which obviously there is a space in the slide that you would be seeing very soon. So for that one, you have unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning means that it does not have any target variable defined. That means you don't know what you're looking for. You're looking for something. Given a case that you don't know in the next traffic light, what are you going to encounter? You do not know, uh, you know, you're going into a school or college for the first time and being, me being an outsider, not one of your faculties, I don't know what type of students are. So based on the interaction, I would know the type, and that is your input data. So unsupervised learning also deals with continuous variables and discrete variables separately. Think of that, right? Take a, take a moment, think of that. In clustering, as I said, Mr. Vinay Jokare is just looking at the students, and there might not be three categories. I just said, you would need some help more than others. You are a mediocre level student, or you are a top class, brilliant top performer student. But there could be number four. Where are those students who can perform well in few subjects, but may not perform in other subjects? There would be students who can perform all good in most of the subjects except one. So there are a lot of categories and clustering possible and that is where we call unsupervised learning clustering because we do not know what we want. The recommender system. Like based on, if you go to Amazon and if you click on a product, at the bottom you would see other products the customers have bought with a similar characteristics. Targeted marketing. If I give you a targeted marketing product for a book, most likely you're going to buy it because you're a student. But if I'm going to give a book to a five-year-old or 10-year-old kid, most likely he or she is not going to buy it. It's same as a person over 60, 65 years of age. Probably he or she may not be buying that book because they are looking more towards spiritual. So that is targeted market. Association analysis is customer segmentation. What kind of customer is this? What kind of student is this? And then market basket analysis, which is paid. Market basket analysis meaning if you buy a product, what is the likelihood that you buy another product? Think of a case in Walmart, which is one of the biggest retail stores in the US, they had done an analysis long time ago, almost 18, 20 years ago now, wherein they found that a person who buys a diaper on a Friday evening, they also end up buying beer, beer bottles. Could you see it's, it's a little bit off? Why would a person buy beer and diapers together? Well, the story was the person most likely has a kid, and that is why they may not be able to go out and relax and enjoy over the evening. And therefore, they're buying diapers so that at least they don't want to be moving out or heading out of their home on Sunday or Saturday. Plus, they can enjoy at home when the kids are asleep. So when the key kids sleep, they can enjoy their beer, and that was the combination. The two products bought together, that is your market basket analysis. I'll give you another example. Most likely, when you go to a store and you end up buying milk, either you would buy egg and 
or you would buy bread. So milk, eggs, and bread go well together in a lot of cases. All this sort is possible because you have computing power. Do you think that all these equations and mathematical operations like linear regression, probabilistic regression, probabilistic classification, logarithmic regression, all these are new? No. Even I and your some of your professors, in fact, most of the professors might have read this during their childhood, like 30, 40, 50 years ago. Do you think it's new? No. What's new? New is the amount of data now you have these days and the compute power. Talking about compute power, think of this. In back in the days, I'm not talking about 50 years ago, I'm talking about 15 years ago, I'm talking about 10 years ago. The cell phones had capa capacity like 4 gigs or 8 gigs. Today, we have cell phones with compute power like 8 GB, 12 GB, 16 GB RAM, I'm talking about cell phones, and with a capacity of 256 gig, 64 gig, 128 gig, it's not imaginable. And considering the time where Vinay and I have come, and Vinay and I go a long time back, almost 16 years. I mean, we had cell phones where we can transfer those Sai Baba images, which were in KBs. It's not, it's not even funny anymore. Right? So, so think about the compute power. And when I talk to you about compute power, the first thing which I comes, it comes to my mind is Google Colab. Google Colab, and I'm not selling any here, anything here. I'm just trying to educate you. Google Colab is a product which is obviously driven by Google, gives you a flexibility to use CPUs which is central processing unit, GPUs, graphics processing unit, and TPUs, T as in Tango, TPUs. TPUs are tensor processing unit. These are the processors specifically designed for tensor flow machine learning. And trust me, all this to you for free. Why? Because Google wants you to learn machine learning. Google wants you to be able to utilize TensorFlow processing unit, and it's super fast. What you need, all you need is a Gmail ID, which is your normal email, and access to the internet, that's it. If you have an access to the internet and a Gmail ID, you are good, you don't need to buy. I get a lot of pings on my LinkedIn, a lot of pings on my Facebook and others that, hey, nice sir, what should I be buy? What computer? I should need to get started on machine learning. I'd say is the minimum basic computer what is available to you plus a Gmail ID. Let's see how it can be done. So, you know, uh, Ishmeet talked about machine learning. I talked about machine learning. Everything talked about, everybody talked about machine learning. Now let me just, uh, uh, let me just bring it all together, right? Have you seen Venn diagrams? In our 12th standard, we, we studied Venn diagrams, right? So let's do that. Artificial intelligence is the biggest bucket. Machine learning forms the core of artificial intelligence. Now, is deep learning part of machine learning? Yes. All machine learnings, and this is very simple logic you would have studied in your 12th grade. Machine learning, all machine learnings may not be deep learning networks. And I'm not going to go down to the detail level in this session on deep, deep learning. So all deep learning algorithms, the neural nets, as you must have known of now, all neural nets are machine learning, but the reverse is not true. You must have heard about data science, which we just spoke about. So data science may or may not be AI or ML driven. Data science can just be analytics. Data science can just be dashboarding. Now you have chatbots, RPAs. RPAs meaning robotic process automation. Virtual assistants, 
virtual assistant, you know, you, you call somebody and the person you're talking to is not a human being. It's a robot. It's an assistant. Like your Siri. Siri is also a virtual assistant. Or, hey, Google, right? Now, my cell phone activated. So, these are virtual assistants and robotics. The robots which you are seeing are all artificial intelligence. They may or may not have machine learning. Supervised learning and unsupervised learning, as we discussed, are part of machine learning. And then you have reinforcement learning, which is a whole different area of that. I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of these terms, which are used as part of artificial intelligence today. And then you have GANs, Generative Adversaries Networks. You must have seen, or if you have not, you should go Google it, right? Um, you must have seen that a speech by Obama, President Obama, where he did not speak those words, but a computer network was able to generate that. That is GANs. And these are some packages. TensorFlow is an open source package for machine learning made available to you by Google. You have other packages as well, Keras, MXNet, CNTK, Cafe, PyTorch, Scikit-learn, which is the most basic one, R, which is a different language altogether, and Vega. You would have all this for you. And trust me, the Singley College is definitely trying to help not just people in your area or your state, but all over India, all over the world, to help accelerate your journey on AI. Let me ask you a question. Why AI? Why machine learning? Because the next 10, 12, 15 years, probably even more, but I don't know more than that, it appears that the AI machine learning would be really help you or would be the really areas where people would need help. And that is going to help you to get a job. And that is why I was approached by Mr. Vinet to help you get started on AI. He is an enthusiast on ML and AI himself. So we are there as a group, as a team. And if you need any help, obviously reach out to Mr. Vinet and Mr. Sachin. Next, let's talk about a little hands-on technology. I'm not going to make you an expert today, but my motive is to get you a little bit started and show you what resources you have for you to learn machine learning. So the most important and the most basic library in Python. So I'm not expecting you to be an expert in Python yet. We will help you go there. If you are good, you can still learn Python. At the end of the video, I'm also, or end of the session, I'm also going to help you with links for you to understand and get started with Google Colab and Pandas and Python and the whole AI and the world. So Pandas is one of the most important and widely used Python libraries in data science and machine learning. It provides a very high performance for data analysis. So pandas think of it as a matrix, not the movie, right? Uh, Vinay and I have watched Matrix movie, like all three movies, like all four series at a go. So I'm not talking about that matrix. I'm talking about mathematical matrix. So you think of a data frame, which is the most important component of pandas, and it provides you a two-dimensional in-memory object. Think of it as a table. Think of it as that unit which you would need to do any analytics or even write machine learning. So as a result, I'm going to show you and give you the direction on how you get started with one of the most basic libraries of Python, which is Pandas. One more term, which I want to introduce you today. You must have heard about IDE, which is Development Environment, Integrated Development Environment. You must have heard about 
uh, coding environments, Eclipse. You must have heard about Jupyter, Spider. You must have heard about any environment where you can code. That environment for machine learning is known as notebooks. Notebooks is a very general term which is used for a coding environment where you can write pieces of Python code and also comment it, make it a book, share it with people, or extract the Python only code. I'm going to show you all this in a few minutes. So, notebook simply are the documents which are provided by Jupyter. And again, I'll show you available on Google where you can code and write text, HTML, and everything to make it a complete document. And then you can also have Python program extracted. I'm going to show you all this in a few minutes. So notebooks, your IDE, Pandas is a library. And finally, you have Google Colab, which is a free cloud service. As I mentioned, it supports GPU and TPU. You can also improve your programming skills, not just Python, but if you can write in R and many other different languages using the Colab. You can develop applications. So Google is, and again, I work for Google, so I know that they support a lot of open source platforms, TensorFlow being one of them, but they do not stop you from not using or from using any other library. So you can not just use TensorFlow, but you can also use Keras, PyTorch, OpenCV, and others in this area. So how do I get access to Google Colab? Well, I have made a video. I have printed a video, put it on YouTube, and the link I'm going to share you with you in a few minutes, wherein you can access Google. If you have a G drive, Gmail, go to colab.research.google.com and register yourself. It's very simple. I'm going to show you the video as well. So time for demo. Hey, Vinay, I'm ready for taking Questions, a couple of them, just to clear it up before I hit the level. Yes, Nanesh. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, an overwhelming this thing, uh, webinar. Uh, the question is like, what is semi supervised learning? It is one from one of our students. Yeah, it's a hybrid between you have a little bit of data set where you have the model learned from the input and output but you do not have the complete data. So semi-supervised is a hybrid, which I would say a part of reinforcement learning. Again, it's not completely there, but think of it as a hybrid. Next question. Uh, Mr. Ajay Sheikh, sir, are there any questions still further? Can you narrate the questions? Uh, hello, sir. There was only one question. Mm, that what is uh, some example on semi-supervised learning. Yeah, we will provide you the examples of semi-supervised learning. Right. So that was uh, okay, perfect. Cool. So let me just uh, hit the demo and hopefully this will be helpful for people to get started. All right. What you would do is, number one, you can go to these. Hey, Vinay, can you put yourself on mute? Okay. So here, you go to collab.research.google.com. And because I already have an ID, I don't have to register. But when you come here, you can register yourself. Number one. Number two is click on new notebook. So collab.research.google.com. Do not worry. I'm going to show you step by step of how to do it. Hey, Vinay, can you put yourself on mute, please? Okay. So new notebook. And when you click on new notebook, it will create something known as notebook, which is your development environment. 
I'm quickly going to walk you through. Number one, you can add as many lines of course, and these are not, not lines, these are snippets. So you can have one or multiple lines. Import, TensorFlow, STF. You can write as many lines as possible for the code, as a matter. But this will help you to run a piece of code and then run another piece of code. It is not mandatory to have one line, two or ten. It depends on what your comfort level. Then you have text, which can help you to write comments. So I can say, this is my coding environment. And you see, it, it becomes like a, a comment in here. A couple of more things before I can jump onto the real pandas. You can change the name over here, so whatever you want to do. And you see extension IPYMB. Next is, on the far right, you will see a share. So you can share the notebook with anybody and everybody. And then finally, play around with these things. Play around with these things you will know. Finally, you have runtime option. Go to change runtime, and you will see none means CPU, GPU, or TPU as your hardware. I would strongly recommend to utilize the C tips which Google is providing you open source. No charges, it's free and learn on the cloud. It's a cloud-based notebook. And one more thing which I wanted to show is on the left hand side, you see, you see these three icons. The last one is the file. Now, when you see the file, there is a mount drive. Mount drive means your drive.google.com, your Google Drive can be mounted. So it will say connect to Google Drive, and you know it will ask you to you know do a little bit of authorizations and everything, which is and you can see your Google Drive, which you can put your files, you can add, delete anything using this TensorFlow library. Not the TensorFlow, sorry, Google Colab. Now so let me start with pandas. Again, this notebook of pandas is available on a tiny URL, which I'm going to share you in a few minutes. But you can go to tiny URL intro to pandas. So tinyurl.com forward slash intro to pandas. If you go Click here, you will be able to see the, the file, the, the pandas file, the reference guide. Mr. Deepraj was kind enough to put a handbook for us. And then this is the data set, which is COVID-19 data set, used today for demonstration purposes. So notebook, pandas reference guide, and the data, which is COVID-19. All right, so let's jump onto some demonstrations here. Number one, if you open this notebook, make a copy. You may not have edit permission, so go to file and say, save a copy in Drive. If you click on this save a copy in Drive, you will have your own copy, and then you can make any changes you want. So do not, uh, you know, worry about that it's going to change the main copy, it's not going to be. So go to File, Save a Copy in Drive, or a GitHub, if you have a GitHub. For your references, what I have done is, created a video out there. If you click on this, you would see a video explaining what I'm just going to show you right now. Step number one, I have written detailed step. If you have questions, reach out to Mr. Vinay or anybody from our team, and Mina is gonna help us connect or help you with this problem, or any problem. So pandas library, import pandas as pd. So import pandas is the function or the command to import the library in the environment as pd 
PD is spanned as it doesn't have to be PD. You can write PDE or PDT or anything. It's just a variable. But pandas is the name of the library and it has to be written the way it is. I draw this. See, you can run a cell. You don't have to run the entire code at one go. You can run a cell. Next, I'm going to create our first data frame. Remember, data frame, a matrix, data frame, table, data frame, tabular data, data frame. So you have your first data frame, data frame, and then you see here, and if you take your mouse pointer, it will give you the syntax. So as a hard code engineer in Google, I never memorize any code. I never memorize anything. All I memorize is a concept. And that tells me, uh, that reminds me of a dialogue in, from Three Idiots. I'm pretty sure most of you have watched the movie, Hindi movie, Three Idiots, which says, run behind the excellence. The success will follow. I would say from Google perspective, run behind the concept. The syntax is Google. Google the syntax, understand the concept. So data frame, I'm creating a city ID as a column, and 101, 102, 103, and 104. First data frame is a variable. PD is a pandas, dot data frame. And first data frame I've written on the next slide. And you can see that here, this snippet had one code of line of code, the second snippet had two lines of code. And if I run this, it's going to give you the same. It's a very simple definition of how you create a data frame with one column, four values. One column, four records. Next, let's expand it a little bit. In the next one, I'm creating a data frame with three columns, four records, four rows. Column, column, rows. Right? So I have city ID 101, 102, 103, 104. City name, Mumbai, Pune, Delhi, Solapur, and temperature, and these are average temperatures. Please note the syntax. You have curly braces to begin and to end, and for every name of the column, I have colon separating the data value. You don't have to do this, I'm just showing it for a demonstration. I like Next, I'm going to create another data frame. This time, I'm going to say DF2. Remember in the previous one, which is DF1, data frame 1, I'm saying temperature. In the second data frame, I'm saying humidity. So city and ID and city remain the same. I have one data frame with temperature, another data frame with humidity. Same concept, run it. Let's join. I just wanted to show you that you can use it as if it's a table, it's a database, or any form of data. So I have data frame three, pd dot merge, and I'm going to merge the data frame one, comma data frame two, on the column which is city ID. So you can see that a join has been created. This was the basic, basic thing on Panda. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's use another library, which is matplotlib. Matplotlib is a library, and please note that I know I got a message saying that I'm not able to access this YouTube link. You will not be because the, the video is going to be live at 11 a.m. <coughs> 11 a.m. in next 20, 22 minutes. The reason I don't want to put the video out before I show the demonstration is because it is going it may have undermined the session itself. So please bear with me. At 11 a.m. today, Eastern Time, U.S. Time, which is in next 22 minutes, you'll be able to watch this video. 
Next, importing data. So from CSV file, you can read the file name. And these are some commands. So please note that this is a comment and I have put some commands for your reference. Also, please note that Mr. Deepra Chauhan, who is an expert in big data and machine learning, was kind enough to help us put a handbook, which is right here. Please go to this handbook using tiny URL. Intro to pandas, tinyurl.com forward slash intro to pandas. <coughs> you can access this now. And this is a reference guide, use it. This is one of those guides I would highly recommend. Mr. Deepra Chauhan had put this out there and it gives you every possible Python command for you to learn machine learning. So thank you Deepra for that. So you have from CSV file, how do you read the file name? How can you read a Excel file? How can you read a SQL table, a JSON file? HTML or a clipboard. You can export data also. <coughs> you can export data also here in this, wherein you can have write to a CSV, write to an Excel, write to a SQL or JSON. Let's start the point. Let's start to understand the COVID-19 data. Now, before we begin, you can see that you have COVID-19 data set already created and made available here. Now, what you wanna do is you can make a copy of COVID-19 data set in your Google Drive, anywhere in Google Drive. Remember the files over here? Mount Drive. Click on mount, it will ask you to give permissions and access and all those things. You don't have to worry about it. And once you have the drive, if you don't see it, just refresh. In the drive, in my drive, in webinars, in row to pandas, I have kept this COVID-19. Right click, see copy path. If you copy path, this would be the path it will give you. You don't have to write it manually. Right click here, say copy path. So let's start it. Matplotlib is another library which is used for visualizations. So matplotlib.pyplot. Within my matplotlib, there is a class pyplot which I'm gonna use and I'm gonna alias it as plt. import pandas as pd. I create a data frame, remember? The command pd dot read underscore csv. Do not memorize it. Go to the reference handbook created by Mr. Jeepraj, available on tinyurl.com forward slash intro to pandas, refer it, and this is what the command would look like. So I'm gonna run this. And COVID underscore df dot n is going to give you the record, the rows, the columns in the data set. Step number two. I want to find out on June 10th when we made this demo, what were the top 10 countries affected by coronavirus? So I created a data frame, COVID data frame underscore June 10. Again, this is just a variable. Using COVID data frame from the previous one, and I'm filtering out date. This is the syntax. COVID data frame and within data frame, I want to select one day, date. And this date is going to be the date where I would like to find which are my top 10 countries affected by coronavirus. 
Let's do that. I'm going to run it. And the next statement, and if you see that India is number five now, just a little bit behind United Kingdom. Not that I'm happy about it, but it shows you top 10 countries. How did it show on this day? Using the COVID June 10 data set, I group by on country. Confirm is the number of COVID. This is a confirmed column. Dot sum. Dot sort values. That means I want to do the top 10. So you have to sort in descending order the number of COVID-19 cases. And I'm going to run it. So it shows me the top 10 COVID-19 cases. Now let's do some visualizations on US. You can do it on India. In fact, this can be your homework. You can do it on India. So I'm using DF underscore USA, using the COVID-19 DF data frame, filtering out US country. For our discussion sake, I'm taking anything on or after May 1st. And then us.head. This is another command, which is from pandas, which is head 10 and tail 10. Head means the top 10 records, tail means the top 10, bottom 10 records. So I run this and I can see the top 10 and the bottom 10 records in the output. And this is how easy the notebook can be. I know that we are deep into the code now, but don't forget the environment. I don't have to set up for a meeting like this, a session like this, for a class like this. I can always run this without any problems of infrastructure on the cloud provided by Google. And I can save it and share it with others. Now, one more thing, which you know, one of the students asked me earlier was, date time, how can I do a date time? And that was an interesting thing for me. If you look at the date syntax, it's 2020 0603. I want to convert into, let's say, 0603. So for example, 2020 0501, I want to convert into 0501. Date formatted, I run this, and you can print and see the date formatted. This is the reason because I want, I don't want the year in my, in my charts going forward. Now, please understand that I'm not going to walk you through how you plot it because that is not the motive, motive of this session. I'm just going to close this one up. I'm just going to run this. Look at this. Uh, only line which I'm going to show you or tell you is plot the date in the x-axis, the confirmed cases in y-axis with color blue. The line should be blue. And it's very simple. Again, title. This is cases over time, label, Y label, X ticks, Y ticks, and all those things. I run this, and you can see the plot. So from, please note that this is one race to E6. That means 1.2 million, 1.4 million, 1.6 million, and 2 million. In lakhs, it is 12 lakhs, 14 lakhs, 16 lakhs, 18 lakhs, and 20 lakhs. The number of cases in US today is 20 lakhs plus, right? That's how sure. Is this enough? Probably not. I want to add the number of deaths and the number of recovery also as part of this. So these are the three items. Confirmed deaths and recovery. Confirmed in blue, deaths in red, recovered in green. And I click on it, you see three lines. Blue, green, and red. So with this, the demonstration piece is completed. Again, tinyurl.com forward slash intro to pandas. Let's go over some other useful resources for you to get started on machine learning. So I already mentioned to you tinyurl forward slash intro to pandas. Why what is what, what is Google Collab? Accessing Google Drive. This is these are some videos you should go watch. Python basics with Google Collab, machine learning flowchart with Google Collab, and 
top 15 Python programming questions which are asked in interviews. So you should be able to prepare for that. Wait, how do I get this? All our all videos are available on YouTube, open for free. How to access that? Go to tinyurl.com forward slash Google BQ. Google BQ is BigQuery. So tinyurl.com forward slash Google BQ. And if you want to learn more, you can also go to tinyurl.com forward slash free machine learning. Again, tinyurl.com, Google BQ, tinyurl.com, intro to pandas, tinyurl.com, free machine learning, all for you. These are some useful resources. Uh, Google BigQuery is a topic which Vinay and Mr. Sachin and all of us are going to do it probably next time. Please join our Facebook group, AI Syndicate, and subscribe to channel Professor V. N. Jokare. Subscribe to our video YouTube channels, tinyurl.com forward slash Google BQ and tinyurl.com forward slash Quantalgo. So if you subscribe to these channels, subscribe to V. N. Jokare, Professor V. N. Jokare's channel. And this is something which you can benefit on machine learning. And finally, on tinyurl.com forward slash free machine learning, all these courses are available for free. And on that, Google Colab is TensorFlow 2.2. This is the link. All you have to do is just go to tinyurl.com free machine learning, and you would see this, all these links, and there is a book which we will send it to Mr. Vinay Jokare and he can hand it over to you. And Mr. Sachin, that will be a moment of respect, a token of appreciation for what you and your college does. So we'll send it to you as a, a thank you. So finally, end of the slide. I really appreciate all of you watching and attending. Hopefully this was informational. Uh, Vinay, over to you. Thank you, Naresh. Thank you, Ishmit. Thank you, Vinod. And thank you, Deep Raj, for joining us. And this was a very good session. I would like to take a few questions by the participants. Uh, there are a few questions. Uh, so what is JSON format? One of the participants is asking on YouTube. OK, uh, who want to so take it? Ishmit, you Deep Raj, Vinod? Anybody want to take it? Shmi, Deepraj, we know anybody of you want to take it or if you want me to answer. Sure, uh, I can try to answer. Uh, so uh, JSON format is nothing but uh, an, uh, a semi-structured format. So uh, whereas if you look at a database table, you your data is defined into rows and columns. But JSON is one format wherein you label the uh, columns and then you assign values to it. Uh, it is basically also referred to as a key value pair, wherein you, the key is the name of the column and value is the value that is assigned to the field. Uh, there, it, it is very commonly used uh, format in uh, multiple uh, you know, uh, scenarios. Uh, a lot of data is transmitted in JSON format and uh, there is a lot of content available online to you know, read through it. Thank you so much. Uh, there is one more question. The question is like, what is matplotlib? Uh, so can we use it uh, to visualize data is one more question. Is it also a library like pandas? Yes, matplotlib is also a library. Yeah, go ahead, please go. No, no, uh, yes, absolutely. It is like a library uh, that we can use like uh, pandas. Uh, NumPy, it is one of the libraries which is uh, specifically being used only for, you know, plotting and visualizing the data. Uh, one more question. Uh, in Google Colab, including Python, which programming language we can use? 
or only Python is used? Uh, I can take that uh, question. So for that, you can, I mean, in Golab, Golab, you can write in Java, R, PySpark, or any other language you wish to. And let me just show you, there are a lot of uh, options here. So even though it's a notebook, you can also write in Linux. I'm not kidding. You can write in Linux. So all you have to do is say bash. And if I say ls, ls means list in Linux or Unix, you can do a ls as well. So not just Python, Java, or any other programming language, but you can also write in Linux. So yeah, just to add there, basically Google Colab is actually an environment that you are getting. So, which you can easily configure. That's it. So that is the main advantage of Colab. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Uh, there is one more. Yeah, there's one more question. Is, uh, is the speech processing or the text processing a part of ML? It is one piece of ML, but uh, I will not call it as ML. I will more likely call it as artificial intelligence. Again, you remember artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, how it all fits together. So I'll call it more an AI side. Of course, you can put machine learning into it. And what is the difference between the weak AI and the strong AI or the narrow AI and the strong AI? So we call it as narrow AI and uh, uh, the, the general AI. So narrow AI is used to do a specific task. For example, spam detection. Let me go back to the slide which uh, Ishmeet was presenting. So if you, if you go to this slide and look at it, all these tasks, which are right here, all these tasks are doing one task, right? What all is like the first one is doing is speech and voice recognition. Next is emails, spam or not, historical sales. So narrow intelligence is doing a task. If you ask an email classifier to do command recognition or forecasting or defect, it may not be able to do that. So if, and there is one general artificial intelligence, which is a separate stream altogether. Think of a Terminator. A Terminator can fly planes, drive a car, you know, love a person or a, or a lady, and then can also fight with the, the bad guys. That is artificial general intelligence. And from my perspective, the artificial general intelligence is years away, if not centuries. Oh, great. That's great. Uh, I would like to ask a question from my side. Like, uh, it was a question from the student side also. So, which language should the student start learning first when he wants to do something in, like, uh, the core domain? Like, he want to use an application and code an application for a specific task in ML or deep learning or anything that is quite easier at the beginner's level? So, as I mentioned before, I will not restrict anybody to a language. It can be R, it can be Python, it can be Java, it can be JavaScript, you know, it can be anything. But what I have learned, and this is my bias side of things, we have written a book on TensorFlow using Python. We have written another handbook, which is also available for free, and I'll, I'll send it over to you, Vinay, on R. Yeah. So, again, language should not be a barrier, but if you ask me, Python would be my number one. The reason is, since the time we started this session today, an hour ago or so, and now after I complete the session, at least hundreds of Python libraries were already created and uploaded onto the Python hub, the GitHub. So that is the, the impact Python has today. And most of the bigger companies are looking for Python as their language to go. Again, Java is also on high demand, R is also high demand. But if 
you are starting fresh, knowing nothing about it, I would recommend Python. Just a point to add there is, um, sorry Naresh, but uh, one more thing there is, and I think that has mentioned in uh, the appendix section to go into BigQuery. Um, like now, uh, Google has come up with a uh, product within BigQuery where you can actually do machine learning using SQL. So that is definitely one of the avenues to explore too, that uh, you know, machine learning is no more getting restricted to only the languages. But actually now you can go uh, dig it using uh, um, uh, SQL. SQL. Yeah, your voice is not audible. It's like uh, breaking up. Yeah, so Vinay, what he's saying is SQL can also be used. Okay, okay, okay. Great. Uh, so there is a last question by a faculty member. Uh, EEG analysis, like... He wants to say some analysis, medical analysis, easy analysis. Does it involve deep or machine learning? And which one can create more efficiency? It's like signal okay. processing, I guess. Yeah, so I am I'm not going to comment directly on that. Okay. And uh, this is my mathemati mathematician side of it. Ishmit, you want to talk? No, no, I'm good. Go ahead, go ahead. Proceed you complete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So... I'm not going to answer that straight away. Let's understand why machine learning and why deep learning. Okay, that is important. When we were in the schools or in colleges, we used to calculate slope of a line. Slope of a line is y equal to mx plus mx plus y or y equals to mx plus b. Sorry. So now that is the slope of a line, which is a linear make it circle, right? Circle is square, so it's a polynomial. You cube, x raised to the power of three. So when you think of an image, an image, let's say, is 728 bit, bits by 728, 728 by 728. In order for machine to learn it, it has to be flattened out. That means the number of columns for one image would be 728 times 728. Then now the x axes are growing. In order to have that much of and that complex of a mathematical equation, you would use deep learning. That is where neural net come into picture. So if a signal has less number of parameters and manageable polynomial equations, you can write machine learning on top of it. Again, you don't want to be running a Ferrari on a village road. And you don't want to be running a bullet car on a 180 or Mumbai Pune highway. So it depends upon where, what, and how you're going to be using it. Now to answer short, for signal processing, if it's just a signal with a high velocity of data, yes, I would suggest deep learning. However, deep learning may not be the only solution. It is a solution, but it may not be the only solution. So, Narish, uh, there is a last interesting question. Uh, is can, in image processing. Uh, can the algorithm detect between a boy and a girl just by the features? Most likely, yes. Uh, we have had, I have a video out there which I can share with you. Uh, Azure or Cog, uh, uh, Co Google, APIs, all then, sorry? Cognitive, yes. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Daesh. Sorry, yeah, so absolutely yes. And Naresh is, uh, uh, we have published a video there on, uh, you know, using Azure Cognitive Services, uh, that can be done. And again, um, if you want to use open source product, then OpenCV is obviously there. So, and, uh, you know, there are pre-trained models using Google that you can use. Uh, there are Google APIs, which can be called to uh, identify not only whether it's a boy or a girl, but not even that. Actually, we can just go ahead and uh, identify their expressions also, whether they're happy, sad, or all of those things. So for that, you don't need to start everything from scratch. Actually, there are pre-trained models which are already available. 
where you can just, you know, using simple APIs, you can just call them over, feed your uh, data out there, and uh, you can get the output. Yeah, thank you, Ishmit. Uh, there is uh, I think this will be the last question. How important mathematics is for machine learning and data science and what kind of mathematics should be learned for it? Uh, okay, so mathematically, no, not really. It's good to have that, but it's not mandatory to have that. Yes, you need to have that, uh, you know, um, I'll say uh, statistical vision over when you are taking a look at the data to understand what the formulas are. Um, like if I'm talking about y is equal to mx plus c, which is for your linear regression, uh, honestly, nobody remembers the equation, but it's good to understand from a functionality perspective, like how does a stochastic gradient work? How does it, I don't want to use all the B words out there, but uh, if you'd ask me in a simple English, no, not really it's required. Absolutely. I thought you were That's about it. to make a reference of the book. So in our book, we have clearly mentioned that the book is written, our book on TensorFlow, adopting TensorFlow version 2.0, on TensorFlow version 2.2. Uh, we have clearly mentioned that knowing mathematics is definitely going to help. However, it's not mandatory. And if you know Python and if you are a coder, understand a little bit of mathematics. I'm not saying zero mathematics you can run with it. And trust me, in the book, I think the number of times the equations on a 130 pages book have been mentioned, it's just two. So I, on two occasions, we had to mention uh, an equation, but it's not required. Oh, thank you so much. I think that was the last question coming up. And uh, I would like to thank you, all of you, for joining us and uh, giving such a wonderful webinar on uh, the most uh, recent topics and maybe the most important topics that the students want to know now, machine learning, AI, and data science. What is the difference between the machine learning and data science? How machine learning can be implemented by using various frameworks? What are the frameworks, the differences between the uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, the exact knowledge of what artificial intelligence is, uh, how the sets are formed, subsets are formed, and all the useful video links that you have provided to the students will actually be very helpful to the students. And I would like to thank all of you for sparing your valuable time and giving such a great knowledge base to all our students and faculty members. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. On, on, yeah. on behalf Please of the please. team, I know like four of us are very closely knit team. So on behalf of the entire team, I would like to thank you, Mr. Vinay, especially uh, Sachin and everybody, every single person of your staff to be able to put this together. And not only this, but to be able to send out e-certificates after the these sessions is really commendable. So I really appreciate it. And I'll be more than happy to bring my team again for another set of webinars as what you wanted to plan. Thank you. Thank you, Naresh. We will definitely be floating the attendance and uh, feedback links to the participants through which we will be distributing the certificates. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And also, uh, I would like to ask our principal, sir, to just say a few lines uh, before conclusion. That is a concluding remarks. Yeah. Over to principal, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, thank you. It was a great session. Actually, for me, uh, uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence both were the uh, like very new areas. I also could understand so many things through your session. And uh, you have shown us the importance and even what are the references to be used to understand or to learn uh, the AI in detail. And about Panda, uh, I am very happy that uh, you have shared the uh, like uh, the benefits of the different languages like Python and Panda uh, can be used. I am very happy. This session, I am uh, I'm sure that the, uh, whoever who are, would have attended this session will be definitely be benefited. 
Once again, I would like to thank our both the speakers and even their uh, like supporters who have spared their time on behalf of our institute. And I must uh, once again congratulate Professor Jokare for organizing this uh, wonderful webinar. And uh, I think uh, it was more than one and a half hour where uh, like we all were attending your webinar, and everybody would have definitely benefited. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks to both of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, lastly, I would like to request our HOD, Mr. Siddharth Sridharan, sir, if he has to say anything, a few words, sir. Sridharan, sir, if you are there. Ah, yes, sir, I am there. Thank you, sir. It's a very nice session. Obviously, it helpful our students. Uh, actually, it is a new era of artificial intelligence and uh, uh, art, uh, machine learning. And we learn a lot of more ML frameworks, Google Colab, and Pandas, and notebook related, TensorFlow related information. That's helpful to uh, us also as well as for students also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Say a word. Give me one second. Thank you, thank you, Vinay, sir. Thank you, everyone. I mean, uh, it seems like now we have started journey in AI. So let's be energetic on that part. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Definitely, definitely we'll be meeting again uh, or uh, in a series of webinars again or in a series of uh, trainings and demos uh, soon. Uh, we will float uh, some new material for the students. And as you said, thank you, Naresh, for uh, providing us with the TensorFlow books. Uh, we will be receiving it soon, I guess. If not, hard copy, soft copy will do till then. And hard copies, as and when they are prepared, we will be happy to receive it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. With your permission, sir, I'll be ending the meeting. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.